These 2,000-year-old ancient Chinese records on Jesus will shock you. Hidden Chinese astronomy records not only show us Jesus' birthday, but also verify the astronomical signs that the Bible teaches us occurred during the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, before the religious Pharisees start manifesting and calling me a false teacher or a false prophet, even though I've never prophesied, <laughs> but they still call me a false prophet anyways, I want to clarify that these are astronomy records and not astrology records. Astronomy is simply just the study of the stars in the sky, but astrology is that demonic new age stuff where people place their identity in some fake satanic zodiac sign to justify their toxic behavior. Like for example, when a woman's acting like a full-on Jezebel but says that she's doing that because she's a Taurus. Like no ma'am, it's not because you're a Taurus, it's because you need deliverance from demons. So don't start lying on my name and saying that I'm making some new age video. I reject astrology in Jesus' name. That's demonic. It's of the devil. What we're talking about specifically is astronomy records, not astrology. Okay, I'm gonna make that clear one more time. New age is of the devil, period, but astronomy is not a new age practice. Even the Jews in the Old Testament used astronomy to indicate the prophecies being fulfilled of the Messiah being born, which is why in the Bible the Jews knew when Jesus was born because they said, we've seen a star in the east. We've come to worship him. You see what I'm talking about? Anyways, you get the point. This ain't a new age video. I'm giving y'all deep revelation. But before we do that, let's get into the intro. What's going on, guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel down below if you are new. And turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado... Let's get into it. Now before I show you these ancient Chinese astronomy records that verify the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, let me give you a backstory on China's history, and soon you'll realize that they may have actually worshipped the god of the Bible Yahweh before it was plagued with false religion and idol worship. Dating all the way back to 2500 BC, ancient writings from one of China's greatest historians known as Sima Qian show that the Chinese civilization all worshipped one monotheistic god which they called Shangdi. The emperor during that time named Huangdi actually built a temple for this monotheistic god in a very similar way that the Israelites did for the god of the Bible Yahweh. Those who worship Shangdi also described how he created the earth very similarly to how the book of Genesis describes creation. The account reads this, Of old in the beginning there was the great chaos without form and dark. The five planets had not begun to revolve, nor the two lights to shine. In the midst of it there existed neither form nor sound. You, O spiritual sovereign, came forth in your sovereignty, and first did separate the pure from the pure. You made heaven, you made earth, you made man. All things became alive with reproducing power. They also refused to create any idols of the supreme god in the heavens that they believe was sovereign. Many scholars actually believe that the Chinese were the descendants of Noah's son, Shem, which is why they picked up the same biblical principles of Yahweh's nature, including describing the creation of the earth, as well as not making any idols and worshiping one monotheistic god only. This temple still stands today and is viewable to the public. For over 2,000 years, Years, the Chinese all worshipped one monotheistic god, who they believed was invisible and in the heavens, until 500 BC when Taoism and Confucianism was creeping into the civilization. Then, in 200 BC, Emperor Qin Shi corrupted Shangdi worship and officially included worshipping idols as a mandatory practice, causing many Chinese to fall away from worshipping Shangdi. However, before false religion completely plagued the nation, the Chinese still had an understanding of biblical principles, such as there being one god and the need of atonement for sins. Now here's where the Chinese astronomy records line up perfectly with Jesus' birth. In the astronomy records of the Han Dynasty, dating March 9th, 5 BC, it talks about how there was a bright comet that appeared in the sky for over 70 days, and it was so significant that all the Chinese knew that this symbolized change and was of great importance. The astronomy records read this, In the second month of the second year of Jianping, the comet was out of Altair for more than 70 days. It is said comets appear to signify the old being replaced by the new. Altair, the sun, the moon, and the five stars are in movement to signify the beginning of a new epoch, the beginning of a new year, a new month, and a new day. The records go on further to say this, the appearance of this comet undoubtedly symbolizes change. The extended appearance of this comet indicates that this is of great importance. Now calculate 70 days after the initial report of this comet being in March, and it will bring you to late May, which was the warmer time in Israel, that made it possible for voyagers to travel long distances in the night to see the birth of Jesus 
Jesus without dying of hypothermia from freezing conditions. This is why Jesus being born on December 25th has been debunked, because the temperatures in Israel during that date would be so cold it would be impossible for people to pilgrimage all the way to Nazareth to see the birth of Jesus. During this same period, Jewish astronomers also noticed the same comet in the sky, which is what indicated to them that the Messiah was officially born and prompted them to say in Matthew 2 2, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Ancient Chinese records from the latter Han dynasty dated in 31 AD also showed that the sun and the moon had eclipsed, causing the astronomers to write that all the sins of the people are now on one man, and even saying man from heaven died. The Chinese had no idea that this was the hour that Jesus was crucified because there were no Christian missionaries at this time until after Jesus died and resurrected. But in their spirit, they still knew that the Messiah had been slain. Here's what the writings say. Yin and Yang have mistakenly switched, and the sun and moon were eclipsed. The sins of all the people are now on one man. Pardon is proclaimed to all under heaven. More ancient readings at the time also read, Eclipse on the day of Gui Hai. Man from heaven died. This lines up exactly with Luke 23, 44, where the Bible teaches us that there was a three-hour solar eclipse after the death of Jesus Christ, during the same time period as the Chinese writings. After the Jews killed Jesus, the Bible records, it was now about the sixth hour and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Three days after the eclipse, the Chinese astronomers also reported a rainbow in the sky that encircled the entire earth like a halo. It says, during the reign of Emperor Guangwu on the day of Bin Yin, on the fourth month of Zongwu, a halo encircled the sun. The ancient Chinese had no idea that Jesus appeared on the earth, yet they recorded his birth, death, and resurrection in the same astronomical ways that the Bible also did, being written 7,000 miles away. We don't see much in the Bible about China specifically, but this proves that God was still working on the hearts of the Chinese, even though they didn't have access to the knowledge of the gospel yet. And this proves that God is sovereign, he's pouring out his spirit on all flesh, and geography is not a limiting factor in how he reaches his people. China will come back to the true and living God in Jesus' name. And I personally believe that China is under so much attack with communism and pagan worship because they do have some genealogical importance that links all the way back to Noah's bloodline, being the descendants of his son Shem. When I first discovered this, I was absolutely fascinated. And this just proves that the history that we've learned about all of these nations having pagan origins is not actually true. Because the deeper you look into it, you see that all of these nations worship the true and living God, whether knowingly or unknowingly. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you're praying that China will be saved, I want you to comment down below, China will be saved. If you guys want to financially sow into this ministry, there's an offering link in the description or you can buy my merch, which is also linked in the description. Your sewing means a lot to me and it's the reason why I can continue to keep going as well as being able to get more resources for higher quality content. Also, if you want to stay connected with me, you should follow me on my other social medias. I got that linked in the description too. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Take care and peace out. Ain't a game, Jesus who I claim. Yeah, he reigns, cross up on my chain. Brand new lane, heaven my domain. The world I gain, but it ain't do a thing. Ain't a game, Jesus who I claim.